Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and this video can be a little bit longer. Now, our node project is almost done and now this index file is also ready. It's listening on port 8000 or whatever port you have configured for. Now we want to move this application, whatever the complex gigantic code is inside this application, we want to move it to a Docker container. Now, moving that is gonna involve a few steps as well as few, a few of the tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you. And that's what we'll be doing, so it can be a little bit longer process. So first and foremost, our application is ready and I want you to understand a little bit more on the structure of this application. Now, all the Node people who are already working on a Node might be really friendly and happy with it, but let me show you how an application is usually transferred uh, especially the node application. So whenever the node application is being transferred, you can see there is a folder here, node modules. This folder is never being transferred or being uploaded to Git whenever you are giving this file. And there is a strong reason behind that. The reason is really simple. Let's go ahead and run this application. We have already seen it's running. So when I go ahead, right click and move this to bin or to delete this entire folder, the package or this entire application is not broken yet we actually are quite familiar that these kinds of application are received in this manner. So once this folder is being deleted, only these are the important files which are there. And if I go back here, quickly do ls and I see a package.json file here, the very first command that everybody runs who receive these kinds of package files is npm install. Now what this will do, this will go ahead and look into the package.json file and will create this directory again so that it can install all the things up here. So there we go, so far this is easy. Make sure you remember this, that we never ever upload this node module file. So there we go, it has finished doing its job and I can just quickly go ahead and do npm start again. Let's go ahead and its app is running at port 8000, go back up here, open it in a new browser, localhost, uh, we're gonna go for 8000. There we go, application is still running. So now that is all clear. Now let's go ahead and create this application transferable. Now we haven't learned yet that how we can ignore some files and all those things in the Docker. So we're gonna do that later on. Right now, all I want to do is right click and delete this, move to bin. Because remember, your Docker application can actually call anybody from inside, but nobody can actually go inside a Docker container. And that's what we are gonna take advantage of. So our application is all ready. Make sure you also delete your node module folder. Now let's go ahead and check up a very quick diagram that I have created for you, which will help us to set up a node application inside a Docker. Now similar kind of thing is also there for Django for Ruby on Rails, but right now we are focused on node. So let's talk about this. So first and foremost, uh, bring a base image. So that's the very first step. Now previously we have seen that we have got the Alpine image, but as I said, in the world of Node, there are a variety of other things you can install, probably Ubuntu, Debian, or the Node image itself. So whatever the base image we're gonna get, we are gonna check that on to the hub.docker. We'll explore some more things on that, and that's the goal number one. So first and foremost, let's take down this challenge and then we'll talk about these one by one. So first and foremost, let's go to the base image. Let's go to the browser and we are gonna go to hub.docker.com and we need a base image. So I'm gonna search for an image which is comprised of node itself. So I'm gonna hit enter for the node and we can see that, oh, I got an official image from the node. I think that's gonna be the best image I can possibly have. But there are Mongo Express and a couple of others which are also node based. But I think uh, this one is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Let's check it out. And uh, as we check it out, we can see that there are a lot of more things inside this. So it can say it's a container, it's a, a whole bunch of things, application official image. So let me tell you what are these. So right now it says docker pull node. So this is the command that we need to run. But there are various versions of this command. So just like we saw, we have docker pull node. And remember we talked about the tags as well. We say node colon and then latest means just bring me the latest version. But it's not always like that you have to grab the latest version. There are some other versions which can be important and interesting in building a Docker container. And all of these that you see here are actually just the Docker images. And there are a lot of things that you can have. Now also you might have noticed there are something like 12.13 Alpine, 12 Alpine. These are all images. So what is this Alpine? 
in the world of Docker, whenever there is a word Alpine, we mean it's a strip off version of the container that you're looking up for. Means all the unnecessary libraries are being taken down and this is the bare minimum possible image of that particular thing. The same thing goes for Node, same thing goes for Django. So Alpine type of image of that particular version of software is always the least minimum possible. But again, let's just say if you install something like on build, it's not gonna break your application or the buster image, it's not gonna break. So we are looking up for this Alpine image. Now what version of Alpine you are looking up for? It can be totally dependent on that. But let me tell you something which is always like the bare minimum. So let's go on to the Docker. Now you understand how to look onto these uh, Docker tags and all of that. So we can go for even the tags as well. There are a lot of tags, like even the slim version is also pretty fine. So there we go. We're gonna go for something Alpine. So this is the one that we are looking up for. Let me tell you another trick of this Alpine. Let's go back onto this. We're gonna go to the Docker file and we already are familiar with the command from base image. So we want to go ahead and get a base image of node of course. If you write just the node, that's also fine. It's not gonna break your application. But if you put a colon, then you can provide the tags of this. Like we can have an Alpine or buster image, whatever you like to have. So that's the first step. We have resolved it that it's not like always I have to get the Alpine Linux. We can grab Node, we can grab Ubuntu. If you'll check out the Ubuntu, that's also there. Okay, now what is the next thing? The next thing in all of these application is to create a working directory. You really don't want to just splatter your application inside a Linux box. That would be really a bad idea. You always want to create a, some particular folder in which you can place your application. Now where to put your application is totally dependent on what your Linux file system is. Some people like to put that into war directory, some people like to put in user directory. Again, uh, it's totally fine wherever you put that, but make sure you know where you are putting up. Just like we talked about this, that in the MongoDB as well, it's not like we work on anywhere, we work on a very specific directory. Similarly, you should always be working in a very specific directory. So let's go ahead and create that. So we have seen this command already. That's work dir. Means I want to have a working directory. Now, I want to be in a very specific directory. In all of the Linux, you are gonna see two types of directory. The one is slash USR and another one is slash var. Both of them are actually totally fine to work on with. Let's go ahead and work on the user directory. Inside the user directory, I want to create one directory, which is gonna be a node app. Now, this name of directory, if it is not already there, it will be created for you on the go. Okay, so step number two is done. We have got an image and we know where to put all of our files. The next step is to bring all the files. Right now, as I told you, the container, a temporary container is being created. So right now, base image is there, a directory is being created, but there is nothing inside that. So we need to learn how we can bring all the files. Remember, I have already deleted my node modules. So in order to bring all these files from here to inside the container, we use the command which is copy. Now inside the copy command, there are two options that you have to provide. The first one is the source and the second one is destination. Now when you say dot slash, that means you want to copy from the current directory. And whenever I say I want to copy to dot slash means current directory of the container. Now there's a little bit trick here. Now when you say dot slash, the second one, that means it will be based on working directory because remember, the order of the steps in Docker are very important. So when I say dot slash means current working directory, that means it's gonna refer to this command that hey, my current working directory is slash user slash node app. So this is the point where it will be copied. But this first dot slash means whatever the context is, just copy the directories from that file. Let me explain that. Remember, we, we talked a little bit briefly about when running the command docker build and a dot, so wherever you're running that dot means wherever that Docker file is, in context of that dot, this first thing will be uh, executed based on that. If you have got it, that's great. If you haven't got it, no need to worry. This is not a complex project. Wherever your Docker file is, all of the files will be copied. So this first dot slash means all the files where my Docker file is. And the second one means wherever my working directory is. Okay, 
Moving further. So we have gone through, we have brought all the files. Now we need to run the installer. Remember I told you all the node files need to run through a command, which is npm install. So we need to run that so that our application can actually be running. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and run that. So we're gonna run a command and the command is gonna be really simple. I want to just run a command npm install. Since node is already installed in my base image, that's why I picked up this node image, it will be super easy to just run this node install. Okay, once that is being done, it's actually super easy that we have run. All we have to do is now start that. So let's go ahead back. Installer is run. Now we need to set a default command. So what is the default command? How we are running our application in our regular terminal. We are just saying npm install. So that's exactly what you have to say inside this node container. Let's go back and run that. So we're gonna simply say, I want to have an executable command, which is gonna be npm, and then we are gonna have in, not install npm start. There we go. Make sure in the command, we take an array of strings, and these strings are commands. So if your command is composed of five different words, make sure you put them inside an array of strings. Okay, so there we go. This should be all good. We have run written just a fewer command as compared to the previous MongoDB. In this case, we don't need to expose any port or anything like that. We're gonna work on that in a second. So let's go ahead and work on that. So let's go back to this guy up here. We're gonna just close this. So control C, we are not listening to any port. If I just go back and hit a reload right now, there is nothing, there is nothing on here because I have closed the application. Now let's run docker build and a dot and let's hit uh, enter there and hopefully it is gonna be a little bit faster process and everything is going fine. Remember we got a couple of warnings, no description, no repository field. I told you explicitly that we are going to see these errors whenever we were creating this application or the project the very first. So this is what it is happening. Now, I forgot one thing, I forgot to add a tag on my image because that would be a better thing. So let's go ahead and tag my image. So I'm gonna simply use an option of hyphen T, then my username, oops, my username and slash, I'm gonna simply say node app. And we're gonna hit enter again. It's gonna be a fast process, but now we were able, we are able to see that. So how we can run this application? The running of this application is actually really simple. All we have to say is, docker run and let me bring that to the top of the screen so we have to simply say docker run and run this image we're gonna hit enter and there we go we are seeing the exact same output that app is running on 8000 this means everything should be fine but no not everything is fine let's go on to the browser and we're gonna hit a reload and there we go our application is not yet running remember i told you that docker container is a very kind of a holy place, not everybody can get inside that. So from the browser, we are trying to get inside this Docker container. We are trying to make a connection there. We're not allowed so, because it's a very holy place. Only a limited person can go inside that. So for that, we need to modify a command a little bit. And that's actually a super fun command to learn. Very, very fun. And you're gonna use that quite a lot. So. Whenever we are saying that I want to run an app, which is node app, I have to provide some of these options. So this run command actually comes with a couple of options. One of them is dash p. Now dash p simply means I want to open a specific port on my machine that can connect to the Docker machine as well. Okay, so what app, what port you want to go? Obviously, uh, we are opening up 8000 and then put a colon sign this is my port on my machine. This port should be connected to what port of the container machine? So my port, container machine. So in the container, I am listening to port 8000. So that is exactly why we are gonna be listening on that port. Again, let me remind you again how this command works. Docker run, we have already seen that. Dash P simply means port. And the first port is my machine. And the second port is the Docker containers port on which you are listening. So we're gonna hit enter. And there we go, again, same thing, no changes at all. Now, but the only difference is when I go back to my browser and hit a reload, now I'm able to connect that and it says visiting route. So there we go. 
So we were able to run our application inside a container and it's working absolutely fine. But there are a little bit of the performance issues and some of the tricks and tips that we have to discuss. Remember, so far we have followed these all steps, but there is one blue guy still remaining, which is some tips. So I know the video is a bit longer. So in the next video, we're going to take down some of the, these interesting tips, which will help you to understand more about the Docker, port, container, and the Node application as well. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.